down because it's time to solidify the new world order when the European states come together. Why do you think that there are so many attacks upon our Bill of Rights right now? Because we all have to be on an equal level. We can't have all these freedoms if the rest of the world doesn't. I don't know what you mean by how they fit. There's certainly a thorn in everybody's sides, but not because they're Jewish, but because they will not settle the Palestinian question. There will never be peace in the Middle East until they do. This is not a Jewish plot. This is not a communist plot. This is not the Nazis plotting this. This is a secret group of men who have been around for a long time called the Illuminati. They are made up of all different religions, all different political viewpoints. They believe in reason. They believe in solving problems. They believe in controlling the populace if the populace won't control themselves. What's wrong with it? Do you like being a free person? I'm, asking, I'm being serious. Who's the person who asked that question? Where at? Well, I'm saying if we, uh, we don't know what goes on in our government now, it's the yes. Whose fault is that? I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm trying to get at an answer. Really, I'm not picking on you. But I have to... I don't know. I'm just questioning you. Okay. The reason that this is happening is because we all abdicated our roles as responsible citizens in this country. We bought a business. Here's what we did. We bought a business. We hired everybody that's going to work in this business. We stocked the shelves with merchandise, and we went on a permanent vacation. What do you think is going to be left of our business in 20 years when we come back? Nothing is going to be left. Because as soon as all those people who are working for you find out you're gone, everything's going to go. Two. Oh yes. <laughs> well, let me let me get through this because I've got a time limit, but I've got to get through all this information. It's important that you know it. The United States was set up so that each individual citizen is a sovereign king. It's the first time in history that's ever happened. A king. Can you imagine that? A king. The government, for the first time in the history of the world, worked for the citizens. We sent representatives to represent our will in our state government and in our federal government. And while they were gone, we took care of their family and their business for them, and we sent them along a little stipend to live on. And they really represented us up until a certain point in time, when all of a sudden, somebody created professional politicians. And we quit watching what they are doing. How can we tell our politician what we want out of him if we don't even know what the hell he's doing in Washington, what bill he voted on, even what's coming up in front of him, and we never read the bills anyway? H.R. 5210 was introduced as the omnibus drug bill of 1988 to help get drugs off the streets, and everybody said, yeah, yeah, support it. But when you read it, inside it, it establishes funds to develop a national identity card. It establishes military installations, installations as mental treatment centers that legalized concentration camps. It authorizes prisons to borrow money to manufacture products, to sell those products on the open market with slave labor, which will destroy small business. I can go on and on and on. H.R. 4079 is in front of Congress, which will allow the President to create a national emergency for a period of five years, which will literally allow him to suspend the Constitution of the United States and declare martial law. Thanks to Cambridge. That's right. That's it. Yes. 
So what I'm saying is, this is our government, our country, and we're going to lose it if we don't get smart real quick. And we're going to find ourselves a part of a one-world totalitarian socialist state merged with the Soviet Union and the other countries of the world in a cashless economic system. Bankers already know it. That's my message to you. My message is to you that all of this extraterrestrial stuff may be phony. I may have been used. They may have passed me all this kind of stuff. For years I believed it was real, and now I have doubts, real doubts. Now I'm telling you I don't know if extraterrestrials are real or not, but there's no doubt in the world that the technology is real. And I've shown you documentation after documentation after documentation. And there's more in my book, much more. So much, in fact, that that book is probably going to cause me a hell of a lot of trouble, but it's worth it if we can save our country. Next slide. There's the membership in the media. The only one that's relatively free is Cable News Network. Daniel Shore is the only member. And that might be why you see a little bit more on CNN than you see in any other network or station in this country. Next. But you only see it when Daniel Shore is off that day. Military. They have been teaching interdependence, one world order, one world government as the solution to war in the Naval Academy, the Military Academy at West Point and the War College since the end of World War II. I'm a little confused. I thought the war has traditionally been used to solve the problems. They want to bring about a one world government that will eliminate war altogether, but they have to have a replacement for a war. The replacement would be a tremendously wasteful space program to repel an enemy from outer space that may or may not exist. What we got to do is find out what the truth is. How would that release, reduce the population? <laughs> Next slide, please. Next. 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 These are the letters I get back from Congress. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Next. And from Alan Cranston. Thank you for your letter expressing your views on foreign policy. And he goes on to tell me what all he's done in the 100th Congress and what he's going to do in the 101st Congress. Next. Thank you. Screw you, Alan Cranston. Next. <laughs> Out of 500 and I forget how many letters, sent a letter to every senator, every congressman, those were the only replies that I ever got. Ever. I sent one to the president. I sent one to the Vice President, I sent one to the Attorney General and each of the Supreme Court Justices. I never received replies from any of them. This is one reason why I never received replies from Congressmen. This is a person who uh, is a staff member of a Congressman on Capitol Hill. She's actually the office manager. She says she sympathizes with everything that I sent, but the reason that the Congressman isn't going to answer uh, my letter, my inquiries, is that she threw it all in the trash can. Next. This is George Bush and the secret team. <laughs> Next. Another reason for a new world order is if extraterrestrials are real, who speaks for planet Earth? Who? I mean, if they're really real, who's going to speak for all of us? Who's going to represent the earth? Me. 
Next. For all of those of you who were going to tell me that you're just one person, there's nothing that you can do, I think this says it all. That young man stopped 17 of the most dangerous killing weapons of war that have ever existed right in their tracks, and they didn't move again until he walked away. That's a real hero. He has not been executed yet. He is a real hero. He's the only real hero that I know in this whole world. In this whole world. That's him right there, and he's Chinese. And most of us would say, here comes the chinks into the neighborhood. That man is my brother. I don't care who he is. And I hope that you learn that he's yours. His heart is probably bigger than all of ours in this room put together. But that's your answer when you come to tell me that you're only one solitary little person. There's nothing that you can do. This is our country. It belongs to the people. And we can do whatever we want to do with this country, but we have to do it together. I hope that we can all find a way to do that. If we could have the, I believe that's the last slide. If we can have the lights, we'll have some questions and answers. Our wives have questions, but I don't know how many answers. <laughs> safety. And you have to understand that we wouldn't have this country if George Washington asked if he was going to be in danger if he signed the Declaration of Independence or signed the Constitution or participated in the war against the king. There are some things worth dying for, and I believe that I found out what it is. No, I'm not afraid. Yes, I'm in danger, but I don't give a damn. Yes, Nancy. because you tend to label yourselves and square off against each other instead of against the real enemies. For instance, I know many people in this room consider themselves to be right-wing conservatives. I also know many people in this room who consider themselves to be left-wing liberals. But I also know that in their heart, every one of those people believes in this country, believes in the Constitution of the United States, would never consent willingly to give up any of our rights under the Bill of Rights or under the Constitution. So therefore, this right-wing conservative, left-wing liberal is bullshit. They're really Americans, but they don't know it. They don't realize that they're just really Americans. Why label yourself something other than that? I'm an American, I'm a constitutionalist, because that's what this country represents. The Constitution is this country. Destroy it, and this country ceases to exist instantly. Therefore, I have no other political viewpoints, period. None other whatsoever. If it's allowed in the Constitution, I'm for it. If it's not, I'm against it, period. That's my political viewpoint. I would hope that it would be yours, because any other viewpoint is anti-American, anti-constitutional, anti-United States. I hope that if you think you're a white right-wing conservative, that you'll stop doing that. I hope that if you think you're a left-wing liberal, I hope that you will stop doing that. I hope that you will become an American again, because that's what we all started out as Americans, and all of a sudden we became 
something else.